actually sank, according to this theory. So the theory is the company that created the Titanic also had other boats, and one of their boats was called the Olympic. And supposedly, the Olympic had a couple collisions, and it was on its last leg. So before the Titanic set sail, they switched ships. So basically, they put the Titanic logo on the Olympic because they knew it was going to sink, and that was so they could collect the insurance money. The Olympic had 16 portholes, and the Titanic had 14 portholes. Here is a picture of the Titanic setting sail, and as you can see, there are 16 portholes on the side. James Cameron went to look for the Titanic wreckage while shooting the movie. He took a bunch of footage and photos and caught this picture of the Titanic. When you zoom in on the side, you can see a big letter M and P. Around that time of the Titanic, there was a big coal strike. Thousands of people out of work, yet no one wanted to work on the ship due to rumors going around town. Most of the rich people who got invited to the Titanic didn't even show up. J.P. Morgan had a ticket and decided not to go. On the day the Titanic sank, the New York Times spotted J.P. Morgan out with his girlfriend at a restaurant. So let me know what you think. You ever heard of the hollow earth theory? Not really, but like... You I'm never heard of it? Nah. Okay. I've heard so of it. So I think in like the 1960s, there was a pilot that flew over Antarctica. Okay. And he found a hole in Antarctica. In the, in the earth? Oh, it just... That like, led like in into the earth. Damn. So his claim, I don't know if this is true, yeah. but his claim was that he went inside yeah. and he saw like a civilization inside of Antarctica. Oh, shit. Like deep inside the ground underground yeah, yeah and you're saying it's in like advanced civilization like they have shit that we couldn't even create like robots i don't know because it just says advanced civilization yeah, right like, what is here's the crazy part though here's the crazy so he said all of this shit right he came out with the news and everything and said it mm -hmm. then the silenced him like really they, they told him like he couldn't talk about this shit anymore oh shit <laughs> Damn. Yeah. So that's how you know it's it's valid. Bro. But like, who knows, right? Like. Weird nature facts, part twenty five. Dolphins love interacting with pregnant women because they communicate using ultrasound. Not only can they hear the mother's heartbeat, but also the baby's, and they find this very fascinating. For more than 20 years, a dolphin named Polaris Jack regularly guided ships through treacherous waters until his disappearance in 1912. A man from Argentina posted this photo of a giant mosquito called a galley nipper that his mother killed in her home. While its bite can be very painful, it's not nearly as dangerous as the smaller mosquito which can transmit yellow fever and Zika virus. Naka Cave in Thailand closely resembles a giant petrified snake. The average silverback gorilla is four to nine times stronger than the average human male. They can deadlift 1800 pounds and their grip can crush the skull of a crocodile. So guys, we all know of Taylor Swift and her new number one hit song, Me, but did you know that the Me music video hides hidden messages throughout it that'll unveil an even bigger secret that we aren't supposed to know? So first we have the title of the song, Me, which is obviously one, and in the song we're introduced to Taylor's one new cat, Benjamin Button. Now the next hidden message is through this snake, five letters, which allegedly represents her old album. And speaking of albums, here we see seven suitcases to represent that this will be her seventh album. And finally, we can't forget that this whole song is also made of Panic at the Disco's brand and Yuri, where his band's logo has a distinct three points to it. Now, guys, if we total these clues all together, we get 17, and here's where it gets creepy. If we look at what the 17th line in the song is, it is E, E, E. Flip that around, and it says he, he, he. And who do we all know that says he, he? That's right, Michael Jackson, which means that Michael Jackson is still alive and helped make this song. So guys, spread the word, because Michael's back. So guys, we all know Spider-Man from our favorite superhero movies, but if you think about it, we're never told who Spider-Man's parents actually are, but I think I may have found the answer. So the name Spider-Man is nine letters long and he lives in New York City, which is three words. Multiply those two together and we get 27. Hmm. Nothing too strange, right? But if we look on the newest Avengers Endgame poster, there are only 12 Avengers shown on the poster. And if we subtract those two numbers from each other, we get 15. And guys, stick with me here, because this is why the number 15 is so important.
important in discovering who Spider-Man's real parents truly are. So first off, 15 is a title of a popular song by which artist? None other than Taylor Swift, which must mean that she's the spider mom. But then who's the spider dad? Well, if we do some simple math, one plus five is six, and who has six infinity stones? Well, none other than Thanos, which means that their only answer is that Thanos and Taylor Swift are Spider-Man's real parents. Guys, my spidey senses are tingling and I'm spidey shook. Have you ever heard about Tupac faking his death and moving to Cuba? No. Okay, let me explain this to you. So he died September 13th, 1996 in Las Vegas after a Mike Tyson fight. After that Mike Tyson fight, he got shot in the front seat of a car in a BMW, black BMW with such night. Okay, now, apparently that whole thing was staged, like it never went down. What actually happened is that at that show that night, um, he had a security of entourages um, that brought him out and that actually imported him to the Barbados, apparently. Now, where am I getting this source from? Someone named Michael Nice, a British bodyguard that was actually there that night, um, that, was doing, that, that was doing security for Tupac, said he actually assisted him in bringing him to Cuba. That's crazy. Not only man. that, but Suge Knight has actually came out and said that Tupac is actually living in Cuba. Just no one actually believes him. Now, let me go through a couple of sightings. There has been five sightings of Tupac since he's died, um, one of them being actually in Cuba with Suge Knight back in 2004. Hey, so you ended up here, so obviously you think the aliens are real because they are, of course, right? But did you know that there's many that are actually trying to help us? Movies, they're often depicted as something that we should be scared of that want to destroy our planet. And for some, that's true. But not all. Talk about Lyrans, the lion people. Lyrans are a humanoid with a cat head and they came from the Leo constellation. They were 12 dimensional beings. Sadly, their galaxy got destroyed and they were redistributed as energy into other galaxies, including Earth. It is said that the Lyrans actually built the Egyptian pyramids. The is wrong and the Lyrans actually built the pyramids in 15,000 BC. Explain why the Egyptians worshipped these cat humanoids. Putting Sephmet herself, who actually wasn't a goddess, she was an alien trying to help humans. The Lyrans actually used the pyramids as a portal to go back to the Leo constellation. This Sphinx was a carving of a lion. I guess we'll never know. So y'all trying to hear the thought that kept me up last night? So just so y'all know, there's never once been a completed T-Rex skeleton found. What about the one in Michigan with the T-Rex locked in battle with the Triceratops? That's not actually true. It wasn't even in Michigan. It wasn't a fucking T-Rex. But I digress. I don't have time for that argument. The point is there's never been a completed T-Rex skeleton found. Which means they've made most of this animal up. One complete item that they have consistently found is the skull. All the other bones are all mismatched and shit. If anybody has seen these pictures, I don't need to point out how inaccurate the people who draw dinosaurs are because they gave them the bones to a baboon, the bones to a zebra, the bones to a hippo and a swan, and that's what they came up with. Y'all got me fucked up. So basically what I'm getting at is it, it's a dragon. It's a dragon skull. A lot of its bones being hollow would have explained why they've never found a complete skeleton because hollow bones are really hard to fossilize. I'm not saying they breathe fire, but you explain to me why there's a dragon in every single culture on the planet. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about one of the most believable conspiracy theories about the coronavirus. So as we all know, the coronavirus started in Wuhan, China, and the world went into an economical crash. This is partially due to everyone being in lockdown or being in quarantine and having to shut down businesses. Now, what do most people do when they're in lockdown inside their house and they can't go out? They order stuff online. And a majority of the stuff that we order online comes from China. So the theory goes that China created this virus so they could gain economically while the whole world crashed. Now I know you're probably going to be like, but why would they kill their own people? China is already dealing with overpopulation. So you think about it. They killed over a million people around the world. Not only does this give more Chinese people room to move elsewhere in other countries, but it also tackles population reduction in their country. What do you think? Today's conspiracy theory is going to be one of the craziest we've covered so far and I must warn you, if you have anxiety, please do not watch this. So this theory, we're going to talk about the movie Songbird which is supposed to come out next year and it's supposed to talk about COVID-23. 
So now we're going to talk about predictive programming. The definition is here. You can pause if you want to read it. But it's basically the media psychologically brainwashing us to accept something that's about to happen. And we saw this a lot with 9-11. There were so many cartoons imitating 9-11 before it actually happened. Now I'm going to show you pieces of the trailer which are really realistic. Let's rise as we enter the 213th week of lockdown. A grim new reality emerges. COVID-23. All infected Americans are being forced into quarantine camps. So what if the government is programming us to accept the next few lockdowns? Let me know in the comments.